Hello everyone, how y'all doing? Welcome back to Get Your Mind Right Barbecue. I'm Tommy D. It's July 4th, one of my favorite holidays in the year. I got a 13 pound USDA prime brisket here. We'd like to thank Robbie and Kathleen for inviting us down to the lake house once again. We're having a blast. We got a brand new Traeger Pro 780 outside that we used yesterday for some ribs and a uh, 12 pound butt. It turned out fabulous. So today we're going to do our first brisket video. I got this brisket at Sam's Club. Um, they have prime select meats now there, not just choice, but they do have prime. So I'm super excited to try one of their prime briskets. Um, this one's a nice one. Um, I've trimmed it up. You can go online and find several, several, and I mean several videos on how to trim a brisket. Uh, basically you want to keep the fat cap on as much as you can about a quarter of an inch all the way through This hard fat here. I kind of trimmed a lot of it out of this pocket and scored it You want to take don't want to take all of it out, but I'm telling you this whole Flap here was full of that hard fat um, You can go online again like I said and you can watch thousands of videos on how to trim a brisket with it being July 4th today, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and get some good rub on this stuff and um, this brisket. So first things first, what I like to do after we get it trimmed, I'm going to take it out of the refrigerator. Make sure you let it sit up for at least an hour to 45 minutes before you put any rub on it. Um, you want it to kind of start getting towards that room temperature uh, so it's starting to sweat. Some of that moisture can come out as soon as we get these rubs on. And then once we get the rubs on, Obviously, we're going to let it sit here for a few more minutes while our grill's coming up to temp. So first things first, I've been using this Heath Ross garlic jalapeno rub on just about everything. I'm going to use it as a startup rub to give it layers of flavor. I'm not going to go heavy with this. I'm going to hold my shaker up a little bit higher than I normally do because I don't want to get a real heavy coat of this stuff on there. I just want to give layers of flavor. It's not real hot. It's just right. It's got a little kick to it. And I never want to rub in there. I want to kind of pat it in if you can. You don't want to rub the rub in. You just want to pat it in. Make sure you get the size. And I'm not, as you can see, I'm not using a binder today. I really don't use, you can use one if you want. Um, I'm out of duck fat spray. Could have used some duck fat spray as, you, as you've seen me use in the past. But I'm out, I used it yesterday. Gotta get me some more. But you can use oil, you can use mustard. Um, you know, if you let this piece of meat, this brisket sit out, <laughs> for quite a bit, it's gonna start pulling some of that moisture out. Now that we've seasoned that one side with the garlic jalapeno, I just want to give a light dusting on that fat cap. Wanna make sure you give it a good even coat, you know. Make sure you get down into those pockets. Again, I scored that hard fat so it can kind of render down. It's gonna be hard to render it down. We wanna make sure you score it. So it will. All right, that should do it for the Heath Riles garlic jalapeno rub. First, we're going to give it a good coat of our base coat, the Mojo Beef Rub. Shout out to CR's Louisiana Barbecue on uh, Instagram, Facebook. I won his giveaway a few weeks back, and he sent me a bottle of this Mojo Beef. I'm super excited to try it out. Um, I also got another bottle. Uh, from Miss Ellen at AtlantaBarbecueStore.com. That's where I got both of these rubs. You can find her, like I said, Instagram, Facebook, AtlantaBarbecueStore.com. Go check them out. So we're going to give this 13 pound prime USDA brisket a good dose of this Mojo Beef. And make sure you shake these uh, shakers up, folks. You don't want your seasonings and rubs to get clumped up. We're going to give this a good shake. A little bit more than we were with that base layer of Heath Rob's garlic jalapeno. What I like to do is tap it down so it comes out more evenly. 
Make sure we get it down in there. You can get, see why I scored that hard fat? Get some good rub down in there. And make sure you get all the sides as well too, folks. You gotta get those sides. We're gonna, this brisket's gonna render down to 13 pounds. So we're gonna make sure everything's covered up so we can use, utilize this whole piece of meat. Okay, let's pat that in. Give it a flip. Come on, big boy. Man, that looks outstanding. You can already see that garlic jalapeno coming out, bringing that moisture out of the meat, starting to glisten. Let's give this side a good shake. You can smell this mojo beef rub. It smells outstanding. All right, we're using some post oak B and B pellets today, as usual, always B and B. Shout out to them. Shout out to Thumba Pro. We got us a hopper full of that post oak. Smells great. I was uh, turning on this grill earlier. That post oak, you can definitely smell a difference between the cherry and the pecan that I was using yesterday. It smells wonderful. Okay, folks, welcome to Lake Hartwell. What a beautiful view. Super excited to get out on the boat today while we got this big boy on this smoker. Here's the Traeger Pro 780. We just broke this in a few days ago. We definitely broke it in yesterday with the comp ribs and the butt. Got it set at 275. Uh, basically, there's two muscles on each brisket. There's a point and there's a flat. The flat is the smaller end. The point is the big juicy fatty. It's got more marbling in it. What I've already learned on this new grill, thanks to my Thermo Pro, by the way, is I've got two probes here. And I know that this side of the grill is a lot hotter. Every grill has its hot spots. You have to learn your own grills. This side of the grill is a lot hotter than that right side. So what I like to do is I like to put the point in facing the hotter side on your grill. And you would do that on just about any offset smoker or any grill or any smoker that you're using. So I'm gonna get this on the smoker today. We're going at 275. We're gonna smoke this meat until we get an internal tip. We're gonna get a probe right here where this point and flat meets and start poking in there and check it and make sure we get it up to 165. Once we get it up to 165, we'll take the brisket off and wrap it in some pink butcher paper. You can also use aluminum foil. Today we're using pink butcher paper. Um, enough of the talk, let's get this thing on the grill. Now I'm gonna put this brisket fat side up. I like to cook fat side up so that fat will render down into the meat as we cook. And there's no right or wrong to putting this on the grill. Like I said, I know this side down here is a lot hotter than this right side. So I just want to center it up on the grill, make sure it's right over the deflector plate. And uh, it's got some good protection from that direct flame. We're going to shut the... Hey folks, welcome back to Lake Hartwell. Welcome back to Get Your Mind Right Barbecue. This brisket, this prime brisket has been on for exactly 4 hours and 35 minutes. And I'm pleasantly surprised. This is a good thing. My probes, I've used this Thermo Pro Central over here, by the way. <laughs> I've used two or three different types of probes that I brought with me from home. And this sucker's already reached up to 170. Um, so I'm going to get it inside and get it wrapped with some pink butcher paper. Uh, we're going to let this thing get up to about 203 internal. I'm going to put my probe back inside. We'll meet you inside. We'll get this thing wrapped up and back on the grill. Get your mind right. Okay, folks, we're back inside. Uh, the internal temps reach 173. I was shooting for 165, but that's quite fine. It's been on there uh, for about, you know, we put it on at 7 a.m. So we're looking at about four and a half hours, a little over four and a half hours on the smoke. But as you can see, if you can zoom in here a little bit, Bay 2, you can see this bark it's created. I mean, the rub's not coming off that beef mojo and that Heath Ross garlic jalapeno. I've gotten to taste a little of this all you, and it looks wonderful. So stay tuned folks, we're gonna get this wrapped up in pink butcher paper and I'll show you how we do it. Okay folks, I add a little bit more beef mojo to it just to kind of dry it out before I wrap it. Uh, you can see all this, uh, these juices just flowing out of here already. So basically if you're new to this, if you're doing your first brisket, I recommend using aluminum foil. The aluminum foil creates a better seal than this pink butcher paper. Um, and it holds all those juices and all that moisture from this brisket. It holds it inside. It's a whole lot easier to maintain and keep it juicy. Now, when you're talking about the bark, we set that bark. We put a lot of hard work into setting that bark. And that's a lot of flavor on the outside of the meat. 
So I like to use pink butcher paper. And you can get this roll on Amazon for 25 bucks maybe. I'll put a link down in the description where I got it from on Amazon. I like using this. This is more of a Texas style. And what this does, it allows the air and the paper absorbs the fat and the moistures and it keeps everything in there. And it doesn't create as much tension and uh, make this bark. You know, we create, like I said, we created this bark. We want to make sure it stays on there. Sometimes when you use the aluminum foil and you let it get up to a high temp to 203 like we're going to go to today, it loses that bark and that taste. So let's get this wrapped in some pink butcher paper and get this thing back on the grill. So I got two twins, Aubrey and Baxter. I swaddled them a lot with those blankies and everything back in the day. So this is kind of, they were small. They're about five pounds. <laughs> they're actually smaller than this piece of meat. So daddy's got to swaddle the baby per se. So we're going to put this fat up still. So I kind of want, you really want to put this so I can see it. You want to flip it over, okay? And there's that bottom side, babe, too. If you want to zoom in, it's looking great, okay? That's more of that meat side. Kind of want to get two pieces of even butcher paper or two pieces of even foil. Kind of overlap them. Just swallow it over. And you kind of want to do it like you're wrapping the bait or wrapping a Christmas present, a birthday present, whatever you may, whatever you're thinking. Whatever holiday, in this case it's Addie Ray's birthday anyway too. Mm -hmm. Alright. So you kind of want to create a seal there. Fold it over and try to keep it as tight as you can. So you can keep all that moisture in. Keep all that smoke off of it. It's had enough smoke. Alright? And you see already that paper is starting to work through. And that's fine. That's what we want. It's going to absorb a lot of that extra moisture that we don't need. And uh, it's going to keep it in and kind of steam it. And it's actually going to steam. I like this paper on this brisket because it actually steams the meat with its own juices from that paper that absorbs all that moisture up. So all that steams just around it. It's an excellent, excellent way to wrap a brisket. Let's get back outside and let's get this back on on the grill. I'm going to go on a boat ride. What you think, darling? We're going to put a probe in this. We're looking to get this up to 203 degrees. And then we're going to put it in a cooler and let it rest a minimum of four hours. We might go a couple hours so we can get that mac and cheese done. Because this big boy is a little ahead of schedule which is a good thing in the barbecue game. Get your mind right. Hey folks, welcome back. As you can see, I still got it fat side up. That shout out to Thermapro. I got one on my grill grates, my in the, the grate tip, and I got one inside. Basically, when you insert this probe, you want to kind of find out where that point muscle comes and where that flat. You want to go down just a little bit into that thickest por portion of that flat and get your probe in there. I use the same hole that I used before. It's running at 172. That 205 is going to jump back up. We're going to keep running at about 250, 275 range. You can cook these on any offset smoker, indirect heat. Just make sure you're keeping your uh, temp steady within a 15, 20 degree margin. Let's close this lid. If we're looking, we ain't cooking. Welcome to the lake. We're going to have some good brisket today. Get your mind right style. 203 is what we're shooting for, folks. And I'm going to get my little probe here. And basically, I'm going to start poking holes in and I'll show you a little bit later for tenderness. You'll be able to feel it once you do this long enough. You'll be able to feel the brisket being done. Not so much with the temperature. But these things right here, they're a lifesaver. Thank you Thermapro. Get your mind right. Okay folks, it's the moment of truth. Uh, we've wrapped this brisket. It's taken about 10 hours and 30 minutes total to do this whole brisket at 275 on a 13 pounder. So it does cut the time down a little bit. Um, I'm very happy with that. We'll just wait on those results until I continue doing it at 275 versus the 250-225 range. So I got this thing up to about 200, 203 degrees. But basically what I like to do is to get another thermometer, not necessarily look at the temperature, but kind of get feel for it. And it's not going to hurt it poking a few holes. And if that probe goes through that beef like butter, then you know you're ready. I mean, even up here in the point, it's nice and... All that marbling, I can already tell it's going to be great. So I'm going to get this off the grill, off the smoker, excuse me. We're going to get it in a dry cooler. We're going to let this thing sit up and rest for a minimum of one hour. We have to let it rest for an hour. I know it's hard to do sometimes. You can go two or three if you need to be. It'll still be nice and warm. 
all those juices will settle back down in the meat. Stay tuned folks, get your mind right. Okay, moment of truth here. Let's slice this brisket up. 13 pound USDA prime brisket. Uh, it was on the smoke for about five and a half hours at 275. Then we wrapped it in the pink butcher paper and let it roll for about another uh, about five hours. So it was about 10 and a half hours total. Um, I let this thing rest for about an hour and a half. I can't stand it. Let's cut into it. Um, this thing looks super juicy if you can come in here, babe. Look at this thing just leaking and oozing. All those natural flavors and the fat and the juices and everything just rendered back down into that meat and it's been sitting there. It's got that good bark from the pink butcher paper. Um, this thing is looking great. So what I like to do to trim them, um, like I said, I made this little notch here where I could go against the grain. But I like to go about a third way down and cut that point muscle off. There's the point. This is the fatty side. Now I really don't like to squeeze it out, but I can tell you right, right now, that's going to be some of the best beef I've ever put in my mouth. That USDA Prime brisket. Folks, go get you one. Sam's Club. I got this one in Athens. They're selling prime meat now. Um, they used to sell only choice. Go check them out. They got beef tenderloins. They got the ribeyes. They got it all. Let's cut some of this uh, lean is what they like to call it. We're going to cut about quarter inch slices all the way through. A little bit bigger than I like, but I'm going to tell you what right now. I can't stand it no more. Let's get a piece of this lean right here and see what we did. All right. Look there. You got that smoke ring. Not the biggest smoke ring, but it looks like it's full of flavor. You got that bottom notch of the fat still in there. You know, that quarter inch, it didn't render all the way down. Let's give it a taste test here and see what we're doing. Dynamite, baby. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> look, it's got the flop. It's got all you need. So what I like to do is I'll finish trimming that point down, excuse me, that flat down, all the way making that against the grain. What I like to do here is actually turn it the opposite way and start cutting it on the point. And you'll get you some of your fatties. This is the burn inside. Look folks, I ain't got time to do burn-ins today. We just got off the boat. It's July 4th weekend, but I can show you right here. Look how tender and juicy. That good prime brisket, you can't beat it. Next up, I guess will be the Wagyu. If you like what we're doing here, I got a mouthful still. Go check us out on YouTube. We got the full recipe videos. Of course, I'm on Instagram. I love the Instagram. It's doing great for me. Get your mind right barbecue. Spread the word with your friends. If there's anything y'all would like to see me cook, sides, meats, anything, I like to do it on the smoker. Give me a shout out down below. Let me know what you want to do. Check us out on Facebook as well. Hope you're enjoying these videos. I sure the heck am. Let's try some of this point here, baby. Too. Look at that bark. Perfect. One of the best briskets I've ever cooked in my life. Get your mind right.